<clears throat> All right, we're back. Hey, I'm Brett, Use Floorcraft. It's 8.30 and 86 degrees here in the garage. And today we're gonna to talk about drag queens. This is my newest iteration. I love these stupid little things. I call it the drag queen. These ones are sub 250 builds. Uh, it's not how the airplanes always started out. I'll take you on a brief little tour. Let me show you something. That's one of the original ones. That's a DGI 03. Actually, that's the original air unit. That's the DGI OG air unit that's installed in there. Here, I'll pull it down. We'll take a look. This is the original version. Uh, as you can see, it's got the um, DGI air unit installed. Let me pull this off. Apparently, oh, you can see that. So that's the uh, original DGI air unit. I 3D printed a mount for it, and it lives in there just above the, uh, the battery tray. The battery would fit a uh, 2200 4S battery, and this thing was good for, I don't know, 10, almost 15 minutes of flying time. You can tell how, how old this one is. Actually, that's an antenna off an FR Sky radio, and, uh, you know, they're fine. Um, is that an FR Sky? I don't know, maybe one of the Tyrannus ones. Um, the nose was a complicated mess. Um, it worked well. Air inlet on the bottom, cut out for the camera. I like the airplane because the, the pusher design kept the, um, the propeller out of view. Um, it's got a noise, a little prop and slot noise. This is flying with a, uh, 2200, probably 23 or 20, 2205, I think 2300 KV. You know, motor, probably a 6x4 prop is what I would guess. Plenty of room back in there for avionics and access. Uh, a couple of popsicle six, stick spars, you can see. The uh, wiring is, you know, somewhat exposed, but it's just a simple airplane. What do I love about these designs, I'll tell you. I love the fact that basically you can put the CG pretty much anywhere within reason. What ends up happening? is that the center of gravity is easily dealt with because the elevator is always in the induced flow of the prop. Let me show you some of that. So back to the sub 250 versions. Basically, when you think about the slipstream from this propeller, it is always blowing straight back onto that elevator. You've got power steering no matter what happens. You know, it's, um, so that way, if your center of gravity, if the battery slides and you're a little bit forward or a little bit aft, um, you know, you've always got pitch and power in order to recover from whatever scenario you're in. The tail itself, there's some interesting stuff to make it rigid. You know, the original versions, as I was showing you before, uh, there was a lot of popsicle sticks and kind of hopes and dreams and some engineering and, and probably a hundred prototypes before I found something I liked. But uh, what I came up with these, I really think I like it. So. What we're going to do, let's go ahead and build the airframe, and then we'll salvage the parts off of one of these guys, and uh, we'll go from there. Let's take a look at our work surface. There we go. These are the parts. That's your elevator. In the elevator, as you can see, I've got marks here for the popsicle stick. Just right where my fingers are, and uh, that'll get us aligned and provide some additional rigidity for the uh, for the elevator. This is the fuselage. Fuselage is a single piece. It also uh, incorporates the carryover for the nose. that will wrap that up. I'll tell you when you build this, well, you'll see. You're going to build this just about last. We've got the uh, two vertical stabs. These come back. The horizontal sits in between them. You can see where the popsicle stick goes here, there's a cutout because it's gonna go through that additional space there. That um, oval cutout beneath it is for your servo pass-through. Also at the trailing edge, if you see there, there's some index marks for setting your horizontal stab. When your center gravity is on, and if you put your uh, elevator on that little circle in there, you'll end up with a, uh, with a pretty decent flying airplane to start. Otherwise, that's basically it. We'll get into it. This is the wing. The wing 
couple of servo pass-throughs. Uh, you know, as in most of my designs, it's this inverted KFM that I'm going to use. I'm going to use my little crushing tool here in order to just help bring down this uh, fold-over line. It's, again, a series of fender washers, about five millimeters in width. You know, I'll do the same and break my elevons. Um, they're not elevons, these are flapperons. I say flapperons because you got two separate servos. If you just had the one servo, they'd only work as ailerons. But the neat thing is you can play around with these things as flaps um, and still stay under your 250 gram mark. So let's put a popsicle stick in there and let's do one on that as well. So we'll go ahead and grab our glue gun. Here we go. I'm going to need another glue stick here in a second. Let me get that on tap. Place that down. Put my, one of my one, two, three blocks. Grab a glue stick. The next one. Same thing. Little line of hot glue across here. Now this, yeah, I'm right at the end. This is a, uh, these alignment marks on the elevator are a little narrower than the popsicle stick, but it's just to show you where the placement is. So again, we put that there, and that's how that should look. Give you a better view. There you are, you can see both parts. Cool? Kosher. All right, let's go ahead and start uh, building our wing. So what we want to do is uh, I put these cut lines in order to make these segments smaller so they're easier to fold over. Some folks had told me they weren't so wild about having giant folds to make. So a little bit of hot glue here. I got my one, two, three blocks at the ready. You don't need to use one, two, three blocks. You can use, you can just hold it. You can use any sort of weight. Um, put a book on it, whatever works for you. So fold this guy over. There we go, get that fly out of here. Put a couple of blocks on it, just to hold her down. One more there. We'll do the same to the other side. And spin you out so you can see it. Here we go. Still warm here in Arizona. A couple of storms pass through and the humidity is a little higher than I want. That's uh, come home and you're ready to do some cutting and build some stuff. I don't like running the laser in times of uh, high humidity. Um, remember it's liquid cooled. You get that uh, tube chilled down to, uh, I usually run mine sub 20 degrees C. And uh, there are times that that is uh, past the dew point. And if you start getting moisture forming and saturation on your laser tube, um, that thing runs at 26,000 volts and uh, you're setting yourself up for a bad day. You know, I'll, I'll say this thing's been remarkably durable. I've had it for, I don't even know, um, close to 10 years, maybe more. Um, and uh, just, I've gone through one power supply, that's it. I'm still on the original tube. I don't run my laser more than, uh, you know, maybe 70% at max duty cycle um, in terms of power I'm extracting from the tube and it works well. Last long time. Okay, these holes, the center of gravity marks, you know, just give you a tactile idea of where to put your finger in order to get the uh, roughly a correct balance for this thing when you fly it. Um, you could put a, you know, again, I'm flying this on a 3S850. It's pretty tightly cowled. This is a sub 250 airplane, so, you know, it's, it is going to be tight to uh, run space. Um, but uh, it'll accommodate that battery well. So, there we go. Fold that over. Just pay attention to the leading edge to make sure your all your folds are basically coming to meet at the same point. If you do that, you're just going to have a better time with this. So that is the uh, that is the fold. We have built our wing. Um, what we need to do now is we'll put some flight control horns in. I'm going to start here with the uh, elevator. That's the slot they're going into. I'll grab my new style horns. There's one. There's a couple more. Um, the hinge line is always going to be facing down, and that is strictly 
for aesthetic reasons in order to hide it. So I want this to pass through just like this. But actually, before I do it, why don't I break that fold line? So in order to do that, I'll take my little tool. And it's like all the rage now, I know. I never used to do this. I used to break them by hand. There is no harm to breaking these things by hand in terms of cracking your hinge lines, but it just, once you get used to it, sure is easy. So same thing. I'll have this, this wide part of the control horn go on the unsupported side. So this is the hinge line. The uh, elevator on this aircraft, you know, the control horn is going to come above. Just like that. See, it's nice and snug, so that actually holds like it should, which is what I like. Little hot glue. Little hot glue through the center of my control horn. And that's how it ends up looking. When I say through the center, you can see it has come out on the other side, right in the middle. So that control horn is going nowhere. Put that aside to dry. And at this point, these guys probably have done their work. So let's pull them off. I love those one, two, three blocks. I tell you, they just get handy. You just find a use for them everywhere. So same thing. This is going to be the upper surface of the wing. These will pass through um, and they'll be like that. I'm not going to put them on right now just because I want to be able to do some work on this. Let's uh, put this aside for just a moment. We're going to build our tail. In order to do that, we take this and we need the two vertical stabilizers, so they go as such. I have the indice marks facing to the inboard so you can compare them and see where you want to be. Let's put some hot glue on this. Leading edge, you notice that little forward swept portion? I don't know, no reason other than I liked how it looked. Some aerodynamicists can chime in and tell me why it's good or bad or indifferent. And uh, that's fascinating. Don't really, don't really sweat it. Sometimes you just do it because you dig it. Same thing. These go through, fit just like that. Um, I'll tell you an interesting thing, and I'm just going to square this up with these two pieces here. The uh, on the larger versions of the Drag Queen, like the one that's just over my shoulder up there. Um, I had the uh, elevators tabs stick through. Let's take a look. Oh, there we are. Stick through just like this. And you'll see because I just ran a little bit of hot glue on the other side. The reason being is I was getting from the prop a bit of vibration and these were wiggling like that. As they would wiggle, they would separate the foam board here and the elevator would come free. So eventually I realized if I pass the tab through to the other side and put a little bit of hot glue on the other side of it, it would work to rivet it in. And it worked well. Um, that eliminated that vibration problem. So anyway, let's get back to uh, what we're doing here. There's the uh, elevator. That guy's gonna be fine. We'll put it over to the side. Let's, uh, we're running out of parts. This is the silly thing about this airplane. We can actually go ahead and take our fuselage now. And I normally, in the past, I would have built this up. I, I'd break all these elements, and I'll still do that part now. But I'm not going to glue it, and I'll tell you why. So, for the sake of better television, I'll do it here. I don't know if this is better television. But you can see I'm just breaking these pieces loose, so that'll form a nice curve. There we are. I'll break the two side pieces. Well, let me do it on the side of the table. I prefer the longer amount of support. I could have brought more bricks out, but I didn't. Um, call, call me lazy. He wouldn't be the first one. Okay. Uh, a little tick mark here you'll notice. Do you see that tiny little tick? And there's a tiny tick on the other side too. That's where the servo wires are going to pass through from the underside of the wing. So 
Um, when we glue the wing on, which we're going to do here shortly, we're going to put glue forward of that and aft of these alignment tabs. So again, we'll put glue forward of this tick mark, forward here, and then aft of these alignment tabs, aft here. This little recess cutout is for the popsicle stick, stick spar. So that's what we're going to do there. But I'm not going to close the back or the front. Why? Because we need to get a bunch of wires in and through there. So um, why don't we go ahead and do that? We're going to put the wing on now. Little bit of glue up to the tick, on the tick to the leading edge. There we go. Aft at the spar pass through, all the way to the trailing edge. I can block this up like that. And we can pass this through and mount the wing. Seems early, but you'll see why. Now, we can also start taking the tail, and while this is sitting in the jig like that, I'm going to slide these blocks back just to help keep everything square. This is one of the reasons why I love these one, two, three blocks. You line everything up, and that's a right angle, and that's a right angle, and it'll keep everything pointed the way you want to go. So let's watch this tail. The tail can be fiddly. You know, you're, you're interfacing two pieces of foam board that don't necessarily want to be married. Um, so align the slots with the slots. We'll keep sliding. And that's all the way in on both sides. Now, the design of this is that the bottom of the fuselage, which you can't see obviously, is sitting flush. And this should be sitting perfectly flush. Everything is designed so that there are flat spots at the back of these uh, these rudders and uh, it, it'll allow the airplane to sit on the ground just as you see like this. So that's the way we're going to interface that. What we may want to do before we glue that on though is actually let's install the motor. I'll show you. Pull this off for now. I'm going to slide that back just so I can get some access. The underside here, this is a motor doubler plate. The only reason that this exists is because when we put the motor mount in, the motor mount is just like this, this gap is 10 millimeters. This gap otherwise is 5 millimeters. The motor mount is 25 millimeters side to side. This is 25 millimeters side to side, so is this gap here. So a little bit of hot glue on here. slide this into place. It will rest on the top of the popsicle stick and it'll just sit just like that at the back of the uh, fuselage. This is going to allow the motor mount to grip. You know I don't put a lot of hot glue on the inside underneath of this because this is a pusher. It's always going to be pushing the airframe forward and because of that it's always going to have uh, a good amount of, you know, it, it doesn't require much to uh, it's not going to pull itself out. You know, it's not like on a tractor airplane where the motor is always pulling away from the foam board that is the fuselage. In this case, it's always pushing into it. So you're not going to have any problem with, uh, with it adhering or not. So let's go ahead and just finish the airframe. Basically, it's down to mounting the tail. I'm hesitant because what I want to do is I want to pull the electronics off that we're going to use. So let's take a few minutes. You can fast forward through this bit and let's salvage some electronics. Put these aside for now. This is going to be what we're pulling parts from. This is, uh, as you can see, earlier version. I still had these pass throughs here. Um, you know, you can see the motor mount. You can see, uh, you know, add some notes. We'll get into the doublers and the build process from here on forward. But what we need to do first is let's just pull these servos. Just going to uh, salvage the electronics first. 
get the control horns out. A difference that I did, I moved these uh, control basically linkages a little further outboard to reduce that um, angle there. Pull this screw. You've been staring at nothing. There we go. Let's look at the airplane. Flight controls coming off. Aileron. Aileron. Let's do elevator. Elevator. Now we're down to take my isopropyl. Uh, cover my little hole that I use to uh, combat expansion issues. We'll slide you up and we'll do this. That should fix the hot glue adhesion issues. Free. The tail, the elevator out. Again, pull the get as much of this hot glue off while we still have the alcohol helping us out. There we go. Save the vent. Toss the forward hatch. Let's uh, get this wiring removed. Okay, that was bad theater. Okay. Sorry for the interruption. Let's get back and start building the airframe. Avionics up there. So we've got our fuselage mounted. We've got our motor doubler installed. At this point, let's go ahead and put the motor with the mount. And uh, we'll install this. I'm going to pull this piece of hot glue that's caught in there. That's going to want a little drop of alcohol. Hang on, so do I. Okay, we're back. Here's our motor. ESC. You can see the ESC motor prop. I've also got a battery eliminator circuit. That's the BEC. That provides the DC power in order to run the... Um, the radios and servos. That's a uh, part just off of, uh, I get mine off Ollie, uh, AliExpress. We'll take all of this wiring, and what we're going to do, pan you up a little bit, we're going to pass this wiring through the fuselage to the best of our abilities. 
See that? Get it all in there. And let's get our mounter, our motor mounted like that. I'll use uh, a set of forceps in order to reach in there. And grab that wiring. And let's help to pull that wiring forward. There we go. When the wiring comes forward like that, you can see, you should have the battery connector. This will be the DC power from the battery eliminator circuit. And then the ESC signal line, signal and ground. So that's what should all be coming forward. Having this nose open just makes it easier to put tools in there and get to things. Slide the motor into its final position, which is flush like that. And at this point, I'll put a little bit of hot glue just in here. You're really just holding this motor in alignment, so you don't need a whole ton. The, uh, the motor's a pusher. It's always pushing itself harder into the airframe. So again, everything just kind of lines up and your wiring goes through. So now we can mount the tail. That's the only thing that I, I wait for um, in my new thought on this build process because it's a lot easier to get to the motor. You can put it in after you've put the tail on, but boy, it's just nice to uh, be able to slide it on like that and have the space to work. So same thing, tail goes into position. It's all the way snug forward. You see what I'm talking about? Let's bring you down so you can get a better look. So now I'll run a bead of hot glue along these lines here on the upper surface. So the tail on this Foam board to foam board is not always a wonderful structural connection. Um, and that's why before and in the larger versions of this, I was using a lot of popsicle sticks in order to reinforce things. What I discovered, never mind me, I'm just going to install some control horns at the same time, was that when you think about it, what's a composite structure? Well, it's something that uses, you know, two different materials and in doing so, gets advantages from both. I mean, and what we're doing is we're creating a bit of a composite structure. And you'll see what I mean here in just a second. I'm gonna do my hot glue trick on these. Which is, and I'll show it to you. Make sure you get a little hot glue through the center. There we are. My flight control trick is just that I put three dabs, three lines of hot glue. There's one at the leading edge, one at the trailing edge, and then there's a hole at the center, and I pass hot glue through this. I've only said this about a thousand times. Hot glue, the foam board will sit about there, and hot glue will go through that hole and act as a rivet to hold this in place. So anyway, we have our, uh, we have our flight control horns in place. Let's go ahead and start putting some servos in, okay? Same thing, these little cutouts at the front indicate where the wire pass through should be. We want those servo wires coming out forward. Put that in. Put this in. Same thing, servo going forward, servo wire going forward. And now I have this servo for the tail, which has a, that's about a, I don't know, six, five, six inch extension on it. 
you'll see what you need. So if I would love to design this where you don't need the servo extension, but this tail's just too far aft. Um, believe me, I played with it. So same thing, that servo goes into place. Use a little bit of hot glue. I push it through the screw hole at the back, force it through and then put a strap over, touching down either side, screw hole at the front, strap over, do that for all of them. It's a sub 250 build, you know, folks say, oh, hot glue's, you know, heavy and use super glue. You can, you can use whatever you want, but I built this several times and haven't come out to the uh, exceeding my 250 gram weight. So same thing, I'm just gonna give those things a minute or so to uh, to set, to cure before we flip it over. I wanna have those, those servos square and seated in there, so. We'll cut back in a second. Okay, we'll uh, start to take our wiring. And what I want to do is I want to pass the wiring through the area where we did not put any hot glue. So it's coming down through the center. I'm going to reach in with forceps. Yep. This can be a bit fiddly. Life can be a bit fiddly. So same thing. Pass this through just like that. We'll leave it hanging out the side. Yep, it'll stand on it. Let's bring you up. It'll stand on its tail. So, same thing, this side, servo wire. Put it through. I'm gonna use, uh, I have a hook. Let's see, can you see it? There you are. I'm going to pass this through from the front. Hook it on that wire. And there we go. That servo lead. Now, from the tail, let's take this wire and let's run the shortest distance. We can go either direction. That way's a couple millimeters longer than this way. So let's go the shortest distance out through the oval hole. Pass that through just like that. There we go. And for now, we will leave it just like this. I'm gonna use a pair of blocks to put the airplane up. Put the blocks just inside of my servos. So the airplane is sitting like this. Um, bueno. Now, let's see if I can get this wire straight. We like our wires straight, boys. There we go. Now, I told you about the uh, composite assembly on the tail. Where I was really referring to is this interface point. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use the hot glue and we're gonna secure this portion on all four sides, but we're also gonna run some hot glue forward up like this. The reason being is this will form a doubler 
that we will square up just like this, bring down, and square to the leading edge. Hold that just like that, and there should be about a millimeter or so gap at the front. I'll use a one, two, three block, one of my ones with the holes in it, just to hold that down, and we'll hold this in place. Just so we get that bonded. This composite sandwich structure that we're creating is really going to help with keeping this tail rigid. Because we're going to put one more line of hot glue on the top of this. And we're going to repeat the process on the other side. So here we go. A little hot glue here and here. Pull the wire out of the way, all the way up to the front. Place the doubler over and snug it aft. You want to snug it back. You want to have a tiny little gap up at the front. That gap is probably one or two millimeters. Hold that down. There we go. So now that that has been secured, one more line of hot glue. It ain't jank if it works. This will give you a surprisingly rigid tail. Let's let that go ahead and set. These wires coming through here, remember I said there was a little gap? Let's tuck it in. This wire, we'll bring it up, straighten it out, and it's going to run through there as well. So I'll put a little glue on the outside of this. And I'm not going to do anything for a minute. Because I'm just letting it become tacky. Let's see. And the same thing. Tuck this in with its buddy. This servo extension, you want to make sure that it stays connected. You come in through the leading edge up here with my little grab nabber and pull it through. All right. That's using my hook tool. And we'll tuck that in just like that. All right, I'll put a dab of hot glue. Hold that down. I'm going to fix the wires on the other side. Similar. Make sure that's pushed in. And actually, I need a little bit more room. I'm going to use a hotel key card. Give myself a little space. 
and tuck that wire in that leading edge gap. Just like that. Well, we can flip it over. Let me give you a little wider view. Actually, let's take you on tour. So, that's the airplane. The nose is still unbuilt. We have, let's identify these. That'll be uh, aileron wire. That's the extension, so that's coming from the elevator. That'll be aileron ESC signal, and that'll be the power from the BEC. So let's hook up a receiver and give it a test. The beautiful thing about this, here's a receiver. The beautiful thing about this build is that the, uh, the propeller, as she sits, can spin and won't touch anything. So the same thing, this is the uh, ESC signal and ground. And I'm going to plug this in, make sure you have your ground facing aft. And then I want to look for left and right aileron. This should be my left aileron. It appears to be on the left side. That's the left side of the airframe. So, and remember you can fix all this stuff in software if you need to. Signal wire forward, ground wire aft. Should be the right aileron. So, same thing. Plug that guy in. This should be the elevator. I could probably use a longer extension by an inch, but you know, this works. And then this will be the BEC. What I want to do is I want to test all my servos and everything are working right now, um, just to make sure. So I'll grab a battery. There's a battery. And I'll grab my radio. Let me uh, select the right model. It should be selected. Again, this propeller can spin and it does not touch the ground. Plug that in and see if we have ailerons. Elevator. Motor. It's even going the right direction. How about that? All of those seem to work. Now, I've disconnected my battery. I'll shut my radio off. Put that away for now. And this is why I like building the, uh, doing this build as I have. I can take my radio package now and I can tuck everything inside. And I have plenty of access to pull all those servo wires when I can get in through the nose or through the tail. I haven't closed any of that out. I'm going to push the BEC forward. I don't need that. There we go. And all of that tucks up in there. Give it a smush. So now all we have is a battery wire protruding. And same thing. Nothing shorted when I did that. It all still works. So that's good. And at this point, let's close out our nose. I'll bring you around for that. Closing the nose, the nose is just gonna wrap like that. So, and then we're gonna secure it while it cures with a couple of blocks. I'll have these ready. Pull this down, a little hot glue. Just like that. And let's wrap our nose. Let this dry until she is dry dry. 
like, you know, don't muck around with it. Make sure both sides are overlapping. There we are. I put this here and I put a brick to hold down the top and that'll hold everything. Let me look at it from all angles. Yeah, that looks about right. The only other piece remaining is going to be this. This is going to be the closeout on the nose. And we have a vent with the tabs facing aft. So in order to get this to fit well, I crimp. I just push down just a little. Just see, just like that and just like that. Just so that this will slide in. Just like that. And this becomes... That way you put this piece in place and slide that aft and it locks. If it's a little loose, put a line of hot glue here. Um, a heavy line will uh, take up a little bit of space. Only thing remaining are control horns. So while this is curing the nose, I will press these into place. Controls are already broken. When I say broken, I mean the hinges I've already gone through and set the, got those all square. So here we go with those. Where is, did I miss a control horn? Well, if we, uh, End up having to fabricate one for the tail, so be it. So both of those are in place. Oh, the elevator one is back under the elevator. There we are. We'll put some screws in on those. And then we're down to setting sub trims and we should have a working airplane. Now again, this airplane, um, it's got an index mark to show you where you set the elevator. Fly it with a similar battery. You should have similar results. That nose is in good shape. Take my weights out. Let's see. So this piece here, just like that, and that'll go off just like that, and that holds in place. Again, if we, if we want to make this a snugger fit, I'll show you, you could just run a thick line of hot glue, allow it to cure like this so it becomes a concave structure, and, uh, or would that be convex? I don't know, so it bulges out, and that'll take up a little bit of room. If you need even more room, do the same here. If you screw it all up and don't know what to do, put a piece of scotch tape over that, and you now have a hinge. Congratulations. All right, let's... Uh, Let's weigh her in. I'm going to grab the scale. Put a battery in. This is just for the sake of the weigh in. Just going to rest that on there for now. Put it into grams. And look at that. Two hundred and 
26 grams. All up, battery installed. That's, uh, that looks sub 250 to me. Anyway, we'll take it out and go flying. Appreciate your time.